So Judge has already built a system here. When when the stochastic hits 80, it generates a buy signal. And then when the stochastic hits 20, it reverses and generates a short signal here. So let's see here. When would that be? There we go. Something like this. Right. And Judge um, has explained that he's used the th threshold indicator. You know, which, which, yeah, typically that would be the correct indicator to kind of go to uh, when you're working with an indicator like the stochastics or CCI or momentum, right? And you're looking for an indicator to be above or below some kind of level, right? Some kind of threshold level. Yeah, so yeah, so he's built something that, that looks something like this. And let me just, I'm just gonna whip through this and set this up quickly. All right, so there. So I put the stochastics indicator into this threshold solver. And let me set the outputs here. There, okay. So, all right, so yeah, you know, so with the threshold solver, right, whenever the, the stochastics is below 20 or above 80, right, you're gonna get continuous signals here. Every time the indicator is above or below, you know, your, your, your threshold levels here, right? So, but what Judge would like to do is just get a one bar signal, All right? So instead of, yeah, instead of seeing these continuous signals, he would like to get just one signal. So there's a couple of ways we can, we can approach this here. So let me finish setting the name up here. So let's see, a simple solution you know, to just get the first signal, simple solution would be to use uh, the signal blocker. All right, we could do that. <clears throat> um, set this up. Let's see, um, you know, the stochastic usually doesn't stay above 80 or below 20 for very long, so how about if I just block for, uh, I'll just say block this for probably 25 bars. That's probably all that's necessary. And then in the reset, um, let's see, we're not gonna use the reset connection here. So if we zoom in here and zoom in, right, we can see the signal blocker has a reset connection. And that's what the reset signal would be. So, so we're, not, we're not gonna use that. Um, but um, here we have this other one, this input opposite signal. So that is turned on and we can see that basically does the job for us. Let's, let's expand this chart here. So there we go. So we're getting, you know, flip flopping signals here, um, like so, but you know, again, if 25 bars go by, then we'll get another signal in the same direction, like so. You know, if we want to prevent that, you know, if you want to make sure that you're always getting opposite signals, um, then we could take the signal blocker and just increase the number of bars that we're blocking signals for. Um, let's see, you know, you have more than 50. Um, let's see, is that 50 bars? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, all right, let's put 100 bars in there. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, so that got rid of this second um, long signal. All right, so there we go. <clears throat> if we scroll through this. Oh, yeah, so we got a short. And then, you know, all these uh, shorts here disappeared, uh, but then we got another one after 50 bar or 100 bars went by, um, right? So you can kind of see that, yeah, the signal blocker kind of has, um, yeah, you know, the, some limitations um, with it. Uh, if, again, if you're trying to design a system that, that um, always um, alternates signals here, right? So if we're trying to go long, or short, long, short, long, short, long. Um, let's see here, like so. Yeah, so if we wanna remove, you know, 
two signals in the same direction. So if you're trying to get rid of that, well, yeah, we just have to up the um, increase the number of signals to block for. So let's go 200 something like that, and that got rid of the second second one there. Shrink this chart up. There we go. Like so. So this is one way to do it. Let's see another way to do it. That's probably this is probably the, the easiest way. Uh, but typically this, you know what? Um, the, you know this system here is typically referred to. Oh shoot, I forgot the name. What the double stochastic cross or something like that? The, uh, the double stochastic signal or something like that. Typically the way this is built is. Um, to use crossovers. So I'm going to grab a crossover solver here. All right. So if you only want a signal on the bar where the stochastic crosses the level, right? That crossover bar where the stochastic is crossing over 80 or the stochastic is crossing 20, if you only want that crossover point, then you want a crossover solver. So let's plug this in here. There, stochastic crossing over the 80. So for input A, let's set this to the stochastics. There, all right, input A is our stochastics indicator. Now input B, that's gonna be that 80 level. And to do that, we, we want to use a fixed value, right? So the 80 level is a fixed value. And we can just put 80 in here, like so. And there we go. Whenever the stochastic crosses above and below that 80 level, we get a signal. And um, so we don't want the short signal. So what we can do is go to the evaluate so up here under behavior, it says evaluate, and it says both, the default setting. So we only want this solver to evaluate the long signals only. So we said evaluate to long only, and there, and it got rid of the short signal. Right, again, over here, it got rid of the short cross down. Right. And so what we're going to do is um, we'll grab another crossover solver and this time we'll do it for the 20 level so again let's let's go to input a and we'll set that to our stochastics like so and set input b to the fixed value and set up to 20 and let's connect it up yeah let's connect that up so we can see it there. Okay. So there we go. So we now we now want to get rid of the long signals crossing up. So again, let's go back to the uh, evaluate setting and change that to short only. And there. So now get rid of the long cross ups. All right. So there we go. So we have two crossover solvers. And now we want to see both of these signals at any point. So we're going to use the OR node. Basically, think of an OR node as combining multiple solvers into one output. Right? So it takes the output from all the solvers, combines them together into one output. And so now we can see this. Right? And so we can see, you know, so using the crossover system you do see every time the stochastic hits that 20 level or the stochastic you know crosses above that 80 level so you do get multiple signals like this um, right, when you do it this way so, so there you go there's a couple of ways you know that we can do this